Well, hello everyone, welcome to Yorkshire Gamer, and um, I'm going to do a post today, a video post on uh, my method for painting horses, um, and that's using oil paints. Um, it's an old technique, it goes back a long, long way. I first became aware of it from Peter Gilder, um, who, um, as most of you will know, was around in the 70s, probably 60s and 70s. Um, and then when I started gaming in the early 80s, um, it was the method for painting horses and uh, I've continued to use it to, to this day. I've dabbled with acrylics every now and again, but it's such a faff when it comes to painting individual horses in acrylics. To get to the standard of these horses um, with acrylics would take for absolutely forever. So what I'm going to do um, is just share my methods with you, um, how I do the process and um, take you from having a, a base um, figure um, through the priming process, through the uh, first layer and then onto the finished um, horses that we can see in front of you. So I'll just pick one of these up and we'll have a look a little bit closer. So you can see um, how it looks like it's quite a lot of work. Um, there's some sort of shading involved. Um, I can honestly tell you that it is all process and very, very little talent. So um, it works on 28 mil figures. Um, it works best on well sculpted figures like these Perry's miniatures. Um, you can see a lot of contrast um, or in height between the areas of the muscles um, how it's been sculpted on the figure um, and this um, works absolutely superbly with the oil painting method um, that i'm going to describe to you um, shortly during the process of this uh, this video um, just put these um, on here um, for a bit of illustration as well um, these are some of my um, 15 mil napoleonics um seventh queen's own who's ours from uh the uk um and these are painted in exactly the same method as um the larger 28 mil figures that you've just seen and again um these are arabi figures um, and these work particularly well um, you can see there the salt shade in between the the different um areas of the horse flesh and um they are rather nice figures. Um, so it's not just a 28mm um, technique. It can be used on 15mm um, as these are here. Might struggle a bit with 10mm I would suggest. Um, but uh, certainly 15mm and higher it works. So I'm going to uh, bob you downstairs now to the paint area. And um, we'll have a look at the basics of getting the horse ready. And undercoated and the first base layer on before we start using the oils so uh, I'll see you in a second okay so I've, I've moved down into the painting room now and I'm just going to uh, talk through the first uh, stages of the painting process uh, for doing horses in oils and uh, I'm going to use um, the three units that I'm working on at the moment um, these just happen to be what I'm what I'm on with um, so I've got a unit of um, Perry Crusaders Christian Cavalry and um, these are metal and you can see um, all I've done is as you would do with any model I've cleaned the uh, figure up and I've sprayed it with a matte white primer now the one that I use is uh, from Holfords, which is, uh, for those of you outside the uh, the UK, is a uh, car paint, uh, well, car maintenance company. They have high street shops, and they do a they do a white primer for uh, vehicle repair. And I've been using that for thirty plus years for doing horses, and it's an absolute brilliant uh, bit of kit. So that's one of the horses that we're going to use. Um, second, we've got um, some Arab Irregular Cavalry for World War I, uh, kind of Lawrence of Arabia style. And um, 
These are from a company called Artisan. Um, absolutely gorgeous figures. Um, so we'll be working on those. And the third one is uh, these. Uh, these are from uh, Minifigs. And they are um, 28 mil. Um, World War One Turkish cavalry um, from a the little known range from minifigs called uh, what was it called? a blaze far east a blaze or something like that. I should research before I do this video, shouldn't I? Anyway, um, the reason I'm doing this figure is because if you look closely at the detail on this, um, it's relatively um, sparse compared to the. Um, the figures, the, the previous figures that we've looked at. Um, so I went in a little bit too far. We've got a little bit of detail on there, a little bit of muscle definition, but not a massive amount. And these are the figures that struggle a little bit when it comes to painting with oils, and you'll see why as we go on through the course of the video. If we go back to the artisan figure, um, we can see there that we've got Lots of muscle detail around the legs, on the back here, uh, you can see the muscle detail um, all the way down on the back. And that's what the oil paint is going to use to create the shadow. So if that isn't there on the figure, it's very, very difficult to um, recreate that um, using the oil paint method. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see that later on. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do... Um, having cleaned the figures up, primed them, is I'm going to put a base coat on them. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about base coats uh, next. So the base coat, uh, and I know the, the title of the video is uh, Painting Horses in Oils, but this is um, a little cheat um, that will speed up the painting of the horses. Um, this method is extremely quick. Um, it's the drying time of oil paints that uh, takes the, the, the is the issue, and you'll hear a lot of horror stories from some people say, "Oh, it takes weeks. It takes weeks. It takes weeks." And it, and yeah, it can do if you do it the the old old method. So we're going to use the new old method, um, and that is um, the base coat um, is going to be acrylic paint. So, um, in True Blue Peter style, um, here's one I've done earlier, and if you look at that, it is nothing other than the white plastic, sorry, the white metal figure that we saw earlier on that has been given a base coat of, um, in this case, I think it was USA Tan Earth, and I'm going to talk about the colours in a minute. Right, we're back in the room. Uh, just had the postman deliver, so I do apologise for that. Uh, so we were talking about uh, base coats, and um, we had a quick look at um, this one here. And I've just had a single layer of acrylic paint. Um, and what we're looking for with this is, um, or with the base coat, is we're looking to go um, one we're looking to go for a lighter shade. So whereas normally you'll paint and you'll start with a darker shade with your acrylics and you'll build up layers and layers of paint so that you've got um, a, a up to a highlight. What we're doing with these is we're actually starting with the highlight and the oil paint is going to provide the recess, um, the darkness in the recess than the shade. Um, so the colour that we use for the base coat is quite important because that then determines what the highlight is going to be on your finished um, finished horse. So you can't go too dark with your base coat. Um, I'm going to do a couple um, of horses during this batch. Um, I think there's, there's twelve horses. Uh, sorry, the, yeah, there's twelve horses in each of the. Um, the units I'm going to do. So when we come to the end of the video, you'll be able to see some of the, the variations that you can get using the the horse uh, using this method. Um, and I'm going to paint a couple of those with a very dark base, just to give you uh, an idea 
of um, what it looks like and the, the the variations with the oil paints are, are subtle um, and they blend in really well but when you start with a dark um, undercoat it can be quite difficult so I'm just going to very quickly run through some of the colours that I use for base coats um, and they're all laid out here as you see there's quite a few um, so I'll just run through them um, and then you've got an idea so we have got um, Khaki grey, and khaki, um, buff, seven oh eight seven nine green brown, seven oh nine one four green ochre. Seven O eight two five German pale brown. Seven O nine one three yellow ochre. Seven O eight nine three flat earth. Uh, seven O nine seven seven desert yellow. A very old uh, tub uh, dropper bottle of 70912 tan yellow 70847 dark sand 70875 beige brown um, 70856 ochre brown uh, one of the panzer aces there 312 leather belt uh, 70874 USA Tan Earth, which is the colour that the horse was done in that we looked at before. Um, and then 70921 English Uniform Brown. And these are the two darker colours that we're just going to, I'm going to kind of show uh, how a darker colour works. Um, Hull Red and Burnt Cadmium Red. Um, they look fairly light on there, actually, trust me, they're not. Um, so that's the colours that we're going to use. So, uh, oh, it's fairly straightforward. I'll just uh, paint the horse um, and uh, we can see how long that takes. Okay, so um, I'm just going to use this. Um, yellow ochre, one of my kind of go-to colours. Um, it's fairly light. Um, orangey, browny, yellow. Um, as you can see from my selection of other colours, that's the sign of stuff that you like looking for. Lightish browns mixed in with, I know green sounds a strange colour like the carkers and khakis and the green brown, um, but it does work with the horses um, later on when you've added the oils on top. So none of that wet palette rubbish, straight onto an old bit of wood and um, I'll just paint up one of these figures. Um, I'm not going to do all of them, don't worry. Um, don't want to bore to death. Um, paint brush wise, um, this is one that the dog chewed earlier on. Um, I'm not doing any detail here, so I just want to. I just want coverage, so I'm not using an expensive brush to do so. Um, this is an old Citadel brush that I would have inherited because I don't buy Citadel brushes, um, and this just gets battered putting um, paint on undercoat on horses. So um, we'll take the uh, Perry's guy here and all we are doing is we are looking to fill in um, all the white I'm not doing the hooves um, but then um, I'm not avoiding them if you like it doesn't matter with this method at this stage what you paint so long as you paint all the areas of horse flesh so I'm not spending as you can see I'm not spending any time whatsoever uh, making sure that I get a fine line between the horse and the horse furniture so we'll see that happy with that lovely uh, spinning round and again we're just making sure that everything that is not horse furniture is 
covered. Up in and around the saddle, making sure that we there's no um, white lines next to the the reins, and then the last thing to do is that we finish off the tail. So there we go. Anyone could do that. You could get your kids to paint that part of the um, of the horse. We have literally painted the horse um, yellow ochre and made sure that we've covered everything. I do apologise for the uh, the way that the focus is working here, um, but yeah. So that's it. And um, I'm going to go away and paint all the rest of the horses and then we'll come back um, in a couple of seconds on here, but in a couple of hours are here um, and we'll do the next process. We're back upstairs now in the games room um, and we're going to go on to the bit with the oil paint. Um, 20 minutes into the video and we've finally got some oil paints. Um, so I'm just going to talk through um, the kit that you're going to need um, to, to do oil painting and uh, then we're going to paint some figures up and I'll show you the method. Um, so just before I do, and apologies for shaky cam, I'm just going to show you um, the figures that we were downstairs with uh, earlier on um, and they've all been painted up with acrylics and given a base coat. Um, and we'll talk about how we're going to use those different base coats to get different effects shortly. Um, and uh, you saw earlier on all the different types of colours that we used. Uh, and we'll talk about how they mix with the oil colours uh, that we're going to look at in a second. Um, we discussed earlier on, or I mentioned earlier on, about a lot of people have put off um, using the oil paint method because of the time that it takes things to dry. These are just acrylic paints. These will all be completely um, bone dry within probably 10 minutes, but I always give them half an hour, uh, an hour tops before I do anything else with them. Um, so no, uh, so far the, the method is um, no slower or the same as um, acrylic painting. So let's look at the kit that we're gonna need um, to do our oil painting of horses. And um, just put the camera back down, there we go. So first thing we're gonna need, we're gonna need oil paints. Now, um, I use um, mostly these, uh, Windsor & Newton Artist Oil Colour. Um, they're not cheap, um, these are 37 mil um, size. You can get them a bigger, but really you don't need any bigger. Um, these are 37 mil and these are about eight, nine quid piece so um, it's uh, it's not cheap but um, hopefully when you see this video I'll be able to uh, reduce the numbers of colors that you actually need to buy to get yourself off um, to start this method um, so um, going from from dark to light um, this is probably um, and I, what I'll do is in fact instead of dark to light I'll do most useful so this is an essential um, this is van dyke brown and uh, there we go do apologize get used to this camera eventually uh, this is van dyke brown and um, we'll, we'll use this quite a lot to, in a minute this is the best way to describe this is black brown it's very very dark um, and this will have most effect on the darker coloured undercoats that we've got. So, Van Dyke Brown, get one of those. Next up, um, very dark again, but slightly um, less black than the Van Dyke Brown is Burnt Umber. Um, burnt Umber, absolutely essential for the oil painting method. And probably the colour that you're going to use the most. Uh, 
burnt sienna burnt sienna is a lighty, lighter orange brown and this is the most effective color on the light base um, light based horses that we've done before uh, so those three van dyke the burnt umber and the burnt sienna are probably your core three colors for doing um, horses and oils um, the next one i'm going to show you is one i'm going to recommend outside that holy trinity that you get because this is awesome this is transparent brown oxide you'll see the effects of this later on but the transparency of it um, works particularly well with painting horses and it works really really well on a um, orangey brown yellow ochre style um, base coat so if you're going to buy four those are the four you would i would buy i've got some more here um, i've got brown ochre which is uh, quite light it's not as orangey as that appears there it's slightly lighter than the burnt sienna um, so it only really works on the very very light base coat um, brown madder brown madder is very similar to the transparent brown oxide that we had earlier on um, just a little bit less translucent that's probably the right word to use um, it's a handy one to have um, not essential that is the brown ochre and then finally raw umber um, which is just slightly less dark than the um, than the burnt umber I don't use it too much because I find it a little bit dull um, but uh, I'll stick it on one uh, and join the course of this video and then we'll see how we get on so that's video that's the uh, that's the oil colors um, so if you're going to start you're just going to have a crack at it see what it looks like go for those three and that the burnt sienna the burnt umber and the van dyke brown that 30 quid that'll get you in through the door then what you need to get then is this stuff this is distilled turpentine uh, Windsor and Newton oil color I can't say enough with this don't scrimp and scrape on it. Don't buy Aldi's Terps for 29p for 15 litres. This stuff is really, really affects the way that the paints flow, the way that they mix, and the way that you clean your brushes. And you will save a fortune by getting this. Um, it's not cheap. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head how much it is. Um, but I use this for everything, oil paints. And I probably only buy one of these every four or five years. So get one of these and uh, jobs are good. And I'll show you how we work with that later on. We also need a paintbrush. And you don't want any of that fancy detail rubbish at all. I'm trying to get this in focus here. No, I'm struggling. Uh, so I think you can tell that. There. there we go. It's buggered. It's an old brush. It's all fluffy. You wouldn't use that for any detail at all. Dry brushing, maybe. Um, we're not. This is all about technique. It's not about talent. It's not about getting straight lines. It's all about technique, and that is the finest and thinnest brush that you will need for oil painting. Finally, a secret weapon. More expensive than gold. Bog roll. Um, and just like with the real stuff, um, it's worth spending a little bit of money and getting some decent stuff. Um, you don't want your finger going through it, as they, <laughs> as they say. Um, so get some decent toilet roll. So there we go. That's the, uh, the kit that you need. You're also going to need to, and I'm just going to um, move out, do a pull I'm just going to move out and um, shake your cam. Apologies again. There we go. We've got more PPE than the National Health Service there. We have got a big board of cardboard. It's going to get pulled this way so you can't see the uh, green mat underneath. I've also got an old blue cloth on the right hand side. Um, and though I'm not going to show you, but I am going to um, not wear a t-shirt during this because um, it splashes everywhere. I think you can see there that's from the last session that I did and that's just the oil paint that splashed off all over the place um, 
when it comes to um, doing the, the the work. So um, I'll be back in a second and we'll paint some horses. Okay, so we're ready to do a bit of painting now. Um, I've put a little bit of um, the brown uh, oxide, transparent oxide, on the um, this little board here. Um, all it is is an old um, box, but it's not um, it's not absorbent. It's got like a, a thin film on, so a cornflake packet would do the outside that's got the printing on rather than the inside. It just stops everything drying out. Um, so I'm not going to use this um, raw like that. I'm going to get my old distilled turpentine, give the brush a wet, and then I'm going to pick one of these, the Crusader figures, and what I'm going to, what I'm doing is I'm matching the colour to the horse. So this transparent um, brown oxide, as I mentioned earlier on, is particularly good for orange um, type. I'm struggling to do this so you can see it. Um, so, um, as when we put the, the base coat on, there is absolutely no talent going on here. All we are doing is primary school standard t uh, painting slapping it all on, making sure that we have completely covered the horse. Put him down there. Now, don't start messing about with it straight away. Leave it as it is for a few minutes. Because what is happening now while we talk is the, um, the oil paint is slightly absorbing into the acrylic base coat and this is what gives some of the the subtle um, undercoat um, that we got from um, fr from the process so I'm going to start on another horse now this is one of the artisan um, first world war cavalry Arab cavalry again a little blob of um, still turpentine and with no thought whatsoever for accuracy we are literally covering it top to toe with Van Dyke, sorry, this um, burnt oxide. So there we go. There's another one, just slapped on. And um, just to continue with this, I'll do one of each. And there we go. There's the the Arab First World War horse. The the one that we spoke about earlier on with less um, muscle definition than the, than the other horses that we are looking at. Okay, there we go. Just going to, um, I'll come back to this in a second when we've, um, when I've turned the camera off to do some more work with the brown lather, so I won't completely clean my brush. Um, but you can see there what we've done with the uh, with the horses. Um, we've just slapped on the oil paint. Simple as that. Over the top of that um, acrylic undercoat that we did earlier on. So now we're going to get some toilet roll and uh, just going to roll it up into 
flat sheet. Okay. Before you start doing the um, the wiping off process, that's what we're going to do. We're going to wipe off a portion of the top coat of oil paint now to reveal the highlight or the lower colour underneath, which is all um, about how the process works. But what you want to do, I've just seen a video recently um, on television, about, um, on YouTube, about how to paint oil paints. And they didn't do an undercoat, and they were farting about with the... Um, with the toilet roll and brushing here and brushing there. That's not how you get the best effect. Um, so um, we're gonna start on that horse that we did first, the Perry Miniatures horse. We're gonna choose a direction of travel and I'm gonna go from the top down. And all it is is drag across. Okay. Can you see already how that horse looks? When you do that, you will struggle with um, some indentations. So in around the neck of the horse, and you're gonna need to do a little bit of a dab in there. A little bit of dab across the back on the top of the mane and the face. And then we turn the horse round, and again, one stroke straight across the horse. So I'm just gonna zoom in on this now. So can we see that? Are we happy with that? Yeah, so possibly uh, if we look on this one, now we've done it, we've got a little bit of a clean up um, at the back of the saddle. There we go, that looks a lot better. And on the back here, again, a little bit of a clean up for the back of the saddle. Brilliant. And that, my friends, is that. One horse done in oils. So we'll do the same with the with the other two that we painted with the brown madder. So there we go. That, that's quite nice actually. I do like brown madder. It's very, very good. Um, sometimes you'll have problems with back legs. You, you need to go in there and, and get a bit agricultural with the um, with the tissue paper. Um, but then the bits that you can't get to are normally the bits that would be darker anyway. So we're liking that. I'm liking that. That's a nice horse that. Like that one. And then finally we're going to go on to the um, the World War One Turkish horse, which is this one. And again, I'm just going to choose the direction of travel and normally I go from the head down to the um, the rear foot. Yeah, it's not too bad. Again, a little bit dark around the neck, so a little bit of a clean up there. And again, we're going to go from the neck down. So there we have it. Okay, there's another horse. Um, that's actually come out quite nice actually. Um, there's less detail on these but they do work particularly well. So we've done three horses there in probably the same number of minutes and um, just excuse me I'll move the camera. There we go I think um, safely say that I'm happy with those and um, technique you're not going to get it straight away um, persevere with it practice with it once you've rubbed the paint off you can't well you can put it back on again if you do another level um, but it's easier to, to be very gentle with it at start and then um, 
take more off as you go along. Obviously, I've been doing this for, I don't know, 25, 30 years now, painting horses this way. So I have a lot of experience of doing this, and that's why it's two wipes and a couple of dabs and the job's done. Um, you, if you can't get it that quick, no problems at all. Just take your time and um, work on the oils. Um, and they will come to you, do apologise. Um, so I'm just going to do a couple of other colours, um, and um, I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, I've just done um, three horses here using the um, Burnt Sienna that we spoke about earlier on. Um, these work on the very light base colours. So we've got the Crusader horse here. Um, you can see it's slightly red. Um, works quite well on those horses. Um, on the Artisan... Arab horse, again that's worked quite well. Some nice um, sort of changes in colours on that one. And then finally on the um, World War One Turkish horse. Okay, not as impressive on that one, it's okay. Um, with there being less detail on the horse itself. Um, it doesn't prescribe itself massively well for this method, especially with the lighter colours. But they're all perfectly acceptable and uh, they'll all end up on the table um, with all the other stuff. Um, so I'll just put those away for a second. Um, I'm going to do some um, another three horses now. I'm going to use the, the Van Dyke Brown. And if you remember when we spoke um, at the start of this, um, I was talking about not getting your um, base coat too dark and not dropping the horse on the floor. Um, so we're going to go for this. This is the darkest colour that I did. Um, when I did the bases, so we're going to give this a go. I don't think this is going to work particularly well, but um, it's just to show you um, how over time you will get used to um, the different colour combinations. So Van Dyke Brown, as we said earlier on, is almost black. And you can see it going on there. Very, very dark. Um, this was a, if I remember correctly, it was Burnt Cadmium Red. Um, the Vallejo acrylic and um, it's going to be a very very subtle difference on that one if anything at all so we'll put that to, to one just a bit on the back there um, this is the other colour I thought it might work on this is a whole red uh, Vallejo again, all red. Um, these have both come from the uh, Crusader box. Some people struggle with this because um, it just feels like you're not painting. You know, you spend all that time with those, you know, really fine five naught detail. Um, pro art brushes um, made in Skipton in Yorkshire, proper brushes, none of that Windsor and Newton rubbish. Uh, so, you use your expensive pro art brushes and spend ages over a tiny bit of detail, and then you get to painting horses, and it quite literally is I'll slap it all over. And uh, oh, some people don't like it. And um, the, the the myth, really, the, the I think stops most people doing this, is the um, the myth of the drying and how it takes weeks and weeks and weeks for stuff to dry. In the old days, um, the old old method, as I like to call it, and I spoke about it earlier on when we were doing the base coats, um, the original way of doing this was um, to have the base coat 
done in oil. So you would need to have the entire base coat dry completely and that was where the time took because as you can see I'm using a fair amount of um, turp in this because I'm trying to get full coverage I'm trying to get um, into all the nooks and crannies on these horses so I don't want thick paint I want paint that's going to cover but paint that flows so I'm dipping into the turp all the time to get that flow if you did that on top of an oil point base, the turpentine will then start to loosen the base, which will then lead you to having complete bleed through to the white, which doesn't look particularly good. Um, so using an acrylic base and then the oils on top um, leads you to a much, much better effect. So um, I'll dub in now with the... Um, with the tissue and let's see what we've got on these i'm not spe expecting spectacular effects on them um looking at this horse just the way it is i'm going to go uh, top of the rump to the front foot uh, i'm guessing this is one of the red the whole red ones it's not quite an awkward shape horse this because the head's bent round and uh, makes it quite difficult. Uh, so can we get in there? That's actually not too bad. It's quite it's very subtle, um, but I quite like that. That's alright. And just do the other side. Yeah, that's the that's the red colour underneath there. Okay, um, so I think you've uh, you've got the gist of it now. Um, I'll just do another horse before I go. After a, a little bit of time, and you saw that happen, start to happen there, you end up with um, this tissue coming off on the horse, and that's the time when you need to change the um, the tissue. So there you go. That's the Van Dyke Brown. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to finish all these horses off, um, and then I'll come back and we'll have a look at what we've got. So there we go, um, about uh, 40 minutes after I turned the um, video off, uh, we've done all the horses that we planned to do, um, which was um, 12, 24, 33 horses. So 33 horses, probably in an hour or so. Uh, not that bad, really, is it? Um, so I'm just about to clean up, and if you have a look at my hands, this is what I mean, it's a very, very... Uh, dirty process um, it smells a bit as well so uh, if you've got um, I'd do it in an open area upstairs with the window open I certainly wouldn't do it in the living room because um, uh, your partner if you live with somebody won't be overly impressed um, with the smell and the mess um, everything's stuck on the cardboard I've not damaged anything in here but just be aware that it is a messy process and you will need to um, do a bit of prep beforehand. Um, so before I clean up, I'll just show you what we've done or what I've done. And um, just come in from this side. So there we go. There's um, 24 horses. The ones nearest to you are the World War One Turkish minifix figures. Uh, the ones in the high-sided box are the Perry's Crusaders. And um, just moving around again, apologies for shaky cam. Um, we've got the Arab horses there. In fact, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to take the camera off the tripod and uh, do it by hand. Stand by. There we go. Uh, and I've just realised my hands are covered in oil paint. Uh, and so is... Um, my camera now but there we go there's the the basis for the um 
the other one Arab Irregular Cavalry. Swinging round, we've got the Crusader horses. And you can see some of those are the ones that I did that were extremely dark. Uh, the camera doesn't quite pick it up, there is some sort of variations there. Um, I quite like the way that the, the red hull ones have worked with the Van Dyke Brown. That's very nice. Um, and then we've got the uh, World War I um, Turkish Cavalry. Uh, just fly down those. They've actually come out alright. Uh, quite happy with those. Um, it does struggle if you look, go back onto this horse here with the lighter colours, not quite as much um, contrast between the two. If you look at that compared to the one at the front um, on the left, that, that's worked really, really well. Uh, but the one behind hasn't. So there we go. Um, hopefully um, you'll find that useful and um, you'll be knocking up units like this um, very, very quickly. If you've got any questions, please um, put them on the blog, put them on the YouTube uh, video, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's always nice to uh, see the views going up for stuff that I do. And uh, thanks again for listening. And uh, we'll see you soon.